what exactly was Qumran? Was it a massive commercial center with trades passing through daily? Was it a villa, a mere vacation resort for inhabitants of nearby cities? Was it a military fortress posted on watch for invaders with its high tower and defensive walls stretched along its perimeter? Or was it a sectarian settlement home to the authors of the Dead Sea Scrolls where they practiced their own beliefs and laws? Let's find out as we take a look deep into the site of Qumran and uncover evidence of these interpretations. Qumran is a ruin during the Second Temple period and is located on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea. It was recognized in 1947 when numerous ancient manuscripts are found in nearby caves. These manuscripts are now known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Qumran cave scrolls contain significant religious literature. They consist of two types, biblical manuscripts, books in today's Hebrew Bible, and non-biblical manuscripts, other religious writings circulating during the Second Temple era, often related to the text now in the Hebrew Bible. Of this second category, some are considered sectarian in nature, since they appear to describe the religious beliefs and practices of a specific religious community. Many biblical manuscripts closely resemble the Masoretic text, the accepted text of the Hebrew Bible from the second half of the first millennium CE until today. This similarity is quite remarkable, considering that the Qumran scrolls are over a thousand years older than previous identified biblical manuscripts. The Qumran cave scrolls preserve a wide range of Jewish religious writings from the Second Temple period, including parabiblical texts, hymns and prayers, wisdom texts, apocalyptic texts, calendrical texts, and others. Qumran is very special, since it consists of dry arid land receiving merely five inches of rain a year. Qumran is secluded from cities, of course a long trek to Jerusalem is possible, but it is peaceful and near the Dead Sea. There are four interpretations of what Qumran could have been. Let's take a look at the evidence behind each idea. First, we have the interpretation that Qumran could have possibly been a villa. According to Pauline and Robert Doncil and their findings at Qumran, the large dining room and elongated table suggest a type of elegance. Pauline also claims that the banqueters ate reclining with the clear view of the south and southwest, illustrating an example of a villa. The findings of well-crafted pottery throughout the site and furniture materials made from different locations portray a sign of wealth and luxury. The Qumran site also had finely designed pillars and multiple bathing sites. This could in fact have been a villa for a well-status owner. There is also the possibility that Qumran could in fact once have been a commercial center. Its premier location near the tip of the Dead Sea provides easy access and is very well centered. There have been findings of traces of hide from the Nubian ibex within the Dead Sea Scrolls, and since this animal is not native within the region of Qumran, it suggests that trade or travel was indeed possible. The range of different types of pottery, including a kiln, and the presence of high-quality coins found abundantly throughout the site, provides traders with merchandise to exchange. One of the more promising possibilities is that Qumran was a military fort. The once large tower and defensive walls that surrounds the site suggests a high level of defense against enemies. With such a secluded location, the tower provides a great vantage point. There are also arrowheads found that resemble that of the Roman militia and a large cemetery outside the walls, which suggests battles have been fought within the region. The complex water systems and large dining room also portrays a large population that could possibly have been an army. Lastly, the most widely accepted interpretation is Qumran as a sectarian settlement. Discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls within walking distance, the findings of ink wells within the site, rooms designed for scribers to continue their work on the scrolls, the numerous ritual ba bathing sites, and the bone deposits outside the buildings all suggest that Qumran could have been a settlement for a large population of sectarians. Qumran is also located merely 40 minutes away from Jerusalem. If a sectarian would venture off to communicate with other members, the trip would be plausible. Some may ask if some of these theories connect and or if they could coexist. The answer is yes. For example, Qumran could have been both a military fort and a commercial center where travelers can stay temporarily and armies could still be doing their job by watching the region for invaders. The true interpretation for Qumran is still quite unknown. Today there are two superior theories. 
sectarian settlement, or a military fortress, both of which seem equally plausible with the evidence found at Qumran. We will just have to wait for the next remarkable discovery at Qumran and hope it will tell us the answer.